Days at end now, the community of Sydenham in Durban is living in fear. There's been an escalation of gang violence in the area. A school pupil is the latest victim getting caught in the crossfire. More gunfire broke out over the weekend, damaging houses as well as cars. ENC's Desen Thalthia is there with the latest. Good morning, Desen. So the community is living in fear. Just talk to us about what exactly has been happening there where children are now falling victim. Lumfundo, we often use that phrase, living in fear, and unfortunately it's something that's become normalized in so many communities around South Africa, Sydney being one of them. We often see reports of shootings that take place here. If you talk to residents, they will tell you that gunfire is, uh, has become an everyday occurrence, almost an everyday occurrence here. Those messages that were sent to us over the weekend about the latest series of shootings now also leading to this point where we are, where residents are saying we've had enough, we need to speak out and we need to make sure that something is done. And I can tell you personally, from setting foot here, we are at C Block in Sydney. We got here a little while ago. And in fact, these uh, police officers were also very busy just in the time that we were here because they were already uh, chasing a suspect. We were told they had picked someone up. There was also um, a report of, of possible violence. And that's the sense that you get here. It is very volatile. Everyone that you speak to here tells you to watch your back. There are certain places that you can go to. For example, right where I'm standing now, we're told that we need to stand on this side of this wall and we can't go mm. beyond that, that spot because they're not sure what would happen if you stand there. There are uh, threats that are being uh, bandied around. You can hear swearing. Uh, there, there's that type of atmosphere here and with that in mind and within that context let me bring in now the councillor in the area Ramona McKenzie. Ramona yours is not an easy job here and I'm sure many people in this community are looking to you for answers uh, about exactly what they can do to stop this. Talk to me firstly about what you've done in your role as a leader in this community to assist them. Well Dawson I've actually um, had a Diane from who's an MP a member of parliament come to steps to actually uh, speak to them to try and resolve this issue. I've also sent an email to Sharon Hussein, who is our MEC uh, minister, uh, sorry, MEC for uh, police, and she's also taking this up at province at a province level. But this is bigger than local. We need province to come in and actually assist us in this area because it's very volatile. And at the heart of it, this is gang violence, right? I mean, we often hear the term. But now we have civilians getting caught up. I mean, homes being damaged, a, a school pupil being shot in the foot, a pensioners at risk. So why is this persisting for so long, the gang violence it is? Well, Dawson, I've just uh, recently been elected to this ward, and I have heard of gang, gang violence in the ward. But I've experienced it firsthand because of being a counsellor in this ward. And, you know, uh, when the shootings take place, uh, residents contact me as the counsellor. And in the background, you can actually hear the shooting. It's, it's, it's trigger, it's like trigger happy. You know, people are just going at it and shooting and shooting and shooting. It's, it's, it's terrible. People are living hot, hostage in their own areas and, and this shouldn't be. Mm. So as a councillor, I'm, I'm just requesting for province to get involved and to send out more uh, uh, police deployments or whatever, mm. whatever it takes to come out here. This elderly woman, um, they've actually sent photos of, uh, of bullet, bullets you know, enlarged in their beds. Uh, so these women can't even go out to the clinic because the clinic is in between the two uh, places where the, 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 the shooting is taking place. So it's very volatile. It's, it's not a normal situ a situation. And as a counsellor, I fear for the people's lives here. In fact, I just want to bring in uh, one of the residents here at this block. Uh, Ma'am, I was talking to you earlier, Lindsay. You were saying to me that uh, you've, you've been staying here and you do uh, work with your NPO here. Yeah. But I want a first-hand perspective of what the councillor is talking about, about the dangers, for example, your children and yourself. Okay, so the dangers for all of us, I'm not just talking about myself, but the dangers for all of us is basically we can't go out of our house anymore because we have to worry about gunshots. We run an NPO, a non-profit organization that feeds um, pensioners on a Tuesday, Thursday and a Saturday. And we can't do that because while we're doing that, we're getting shot at. We can't have an open air church function because while we're doing that, we're getting shot at. On Sunday, we had a, a, a fun day for the kids and the families and everybody else. Not even five minutes into our event, we got shot at, all of us got shot at. M majority of the people had to run into their buildings. Two elderly, 
uh, died of heart attacks because of the gunshots. Uh, I think there's about seven people that complained of gunshot or bullet holes in their windows, in their closets, in their homes, in their everything. This is an everyday kind of situation. We had it on Sunday, we had it on Tuesday. Today is, what, Tuesday. Tuesday. We, we're going to have it again today. The minute you leave, I promise you, it's coming this side again. What has been the response from authorities so far? Uh, authorities, this as is in the, the police as, as well. As in, this is the second time I've seen the police here. The first time they were here on Sunday and I was sitting and watching them when they were doing nothing. We were basically being shot at and they did nothing. When we came outside to come and chat to them or speak to them or look at what they are doing, we had to beg them not to leave because we know the minute they leave, the boys from A Block is coming for us. So everybody in C Block is fearful for their lives because of the guys in A Block or because of the gunshots. We don't know what's going on. We'd like to resolve this problem so we can get back to being people again. Right now we're just prisoners in our own homes. Thank you so much. I appreciate your, your time. I think that really sums it up, the, the kind of perspective from the community here, saying that they are being held, uh, held captive here. And a very clear call from both the councillor as well as residents to say that there is more assistance that is required in Sydney to resolve this issue that has been going on for years. Mm, that sounds like it's a very difficult place to live in currently. Desson, we'll leave it there for now. That's a reporter, Desson Thalke.